In this video, we'll be going over how to use the custom data portion of the advertising set configuration. This allows you to include anything from device theme to TX power to even advertising count, timestamps, and a lot more. We'll be doing test cases and examples to showcase how to use the custom data configuration in the Nano Beacon config tool. So let's go ahead and get started. In this video, we'll focus on just setting up one advertising set and the rest applies to the remaining advertising sets. So in the first use case, I'm going to be using the manufacturer specific data. So if we go into the advertising, advertise data, go into settings, and for the device name, I'm going to be including the IN100. TX power level, let's set it to zero dBm. And then I'm going to choose the manufacturer specific data. The 0505 is in place company ID. If you have your own company ID that is registered with the Bluetooth SIG, then you can use that as well. Let's go ahead and edit the data that's included. And in here for this specific use case, an example, we're just going to include a few items. The first one being the VCC. This is one byte. Second, after we click append to data, we are going to include the internal temperature as well. And this is two bytes, and I'm going to reverse it and do a big endian. That way it's easier to read when we see the raw advertising data on the mobile app. So in terms of the mobile app, I will be using NRF Connect for Android. It's uh, fast and it's flexible. It has a lot more flexibility in viewing the data than with iOS. So I'm going to be using the NRF Connect for Android to scan and find the advertising data. Let's go ahead and append the temperature, internal temperature data. And then finally, I'm going to include an advertising count. So there's a lot of different types of data that you can include. Some are from reading the peripherals and the, the pins and the external sensors. And some are more internal kind of data. So you can include the timestamp. Timestamp zero is in 100 millisecond units. Timestamp one is in one second units. You have advertising count. You have other reading registers, uh, creating a random number, and a bunch of others as well. So I'm going to be including the advertising count. Again, I'm going to use Big Endian just for sake of clarity for reading the data when we look at it in the mobile app. I'm going to append the data and hit OK. So to be able to find the device much easier, I'm going to make sure that I know the public address or the device, the Bluetooth device address. I'll keep the advertising interval at one second. We're using the LE1 Meg Phi, which is the standard Phi for Bluetooth LE devices. And the rest will also use the 37, 38, and 39 channels. And that's it. Let's go ahead and just view the raw data to understand what kind of data will be included. So we have the complete local name. This includes the IN100. And then we have the TX power level, which is value is 0 dBm. The length of the data come for the next field is for the manufacturer-specific data, which has a type of FF. And then you have 0505, which is the in-play ID, company ID, registered with the Bluetooth SIG. Next, after that, we have a VCC of 1 byte. And then we have the internal temperature with two bytes in Big Endian format. And then we have the count of advertising in four bytes with Big Endian format as well. So to make sure that we understand the values of the data and the units of the data that's included in the advertising set, we go to the on-chip measurement units section. So in here, it tells us that each unit of data that is transmitted in the advertising set for the on-chip temperature unit is equivalent to 0 0.01 degrees Celsius. So if we have a value of 2400, then that equates to 24 degrees Celsius. In case of the VCC unit for the internal VCC measurement, then that equivalates to 0 0.03125 volts. And you can change this unit to however you want to make it easier to understand the data that's included in the advertising set. So here I have the mobile device. First, I'm going to run in RAM. Once it's done, I should be able to scan, and I am seeing the device. So in here, we can see we have different values. So let's look at the raw data. 
So the raw data includes a type of 09, which is the local name, the complete local name, and in our case it's IN100. The next field is type 0A, and that corresponds to the TX power, which is 0 dBm, like we included. And the final one is the manufacturer-specific data with a type of FF. And the first two bytes in the value are 0505, 0, 5, which correspond to the in-play company ID that is registered with the Bluetooth SIG. After that, we have a 6B. And if we go back and look at the advertising data, we see that the first unit or the first field is VCC and it's one byte. So if we convert the 6B that we have, we use the programmer and then switch to hex and do 6B and that's 107 decimal. So the way we do this is we multiply 107 times the measurement unit, which is 0 0.03 one, two, five. If we go back to on-chip measurement units, that's what we see here. So if we go back and convert this and multiply, we'll see that it equivalent to around 3.3 volts, which is expected. Let's go back and look at the rest of the bytes. So we have, after the 6B, we have 07FC. So if we convert 07FC, and we have to convert to hex 07FC, that is 2044, and the unit is 0.01, so that's basically 20.44 Celsius. Now let's go ahead and look at a different example. So as you can see here under the custom advertising settings, we have device name, TX power level, and manufacturer specific data, and then we have user defined data. So if you are familiar with the Bluetooth advertisements, then according to the spec and the core supplement to the Bluetooth core specification, there are different types of data types that can be include and included in the advertising packets. So for example, we have flags, we have service UID, we have a local name, which is already included in the NanoBeacon config tool, we have manufacturer specific data, TX power level, and so on. There's, the list just goes on. So if you want to include one of these types, into your advertisement packets, then the way you would do that is by using the user-defined data. Now that could be one example. Another example, if you just want to include some raw data without the overhead that's included with the advertisement packets according to the spec, and you just want to utilize the advertising packet in a raw kind of format. So let's go ahead and enable the user-defined data and if you want to include data that's according to the spec and maybe it's different field, it's not does not lie within the power level, the local name, or the manufacturer specific data, then you have to follow a certain guideline. So you have to first figure out which one you want to include. So say, for example, we want to include a service UID. So in the service UID, we have 16-bit, 32-bit, or 128-bit service UIDs we need to look up the actual assigned number to this. Well, first, the first thing that always comes is the length. So for example, in this case, we have a length and then a type. The type is also is defined in the assigned numbers. And then we have a service UID. If we are looking at 16-bit, then we just, we just have the length and then the type. The type is for a complete list of 16-bit service UIDs it is 0, 03. So we have three bytes after the length. So if we go back here, the length is going to be three bytes. The first byte is also 0, 03, and that matches the complete list of 16-bit service class UIDs assigned number. That's the type. And then finally, the actual service UID. And for the service UID, it is in little Indian format. So if we go back and look at for example, if we wanted to include the heart rate service and we refer to this document, the heart rate service is 180D. So if we want to include it in little Indian format, it will be 0D18. So let's go ahead and add 0D18. And then say, for example, we want to include service data. In that case, we'll go ahead and look for service data in the assigned numbers document. 
and we can see here it's one six. So we're going to have one byte for the service data. And if we look at the definition for service data, we'll see that it's followed by the UID and then the service data itself. So we're going to have one byte for the type, two bytes for the UID, that's three, and then whatever data that we want to include. Say we just want to include one zero, for example. So let's go ahead and add. So we have four bytes. We have zero four, that's the length. Then we have the type, that's one six. And then we have the service UID, which for example, let's say we want to include the same one here. So zero D one eight. And then we have the actual service data. And let's say we just want to include one zero. And let's hit OK. And we can verify this here by looking at the raw advertisement data. We'll see that there's the complete list of UIDs and that's 0D18. We have service data, which is 0D18 and then 10, the actual da data. And then we have the complete local name and the TX power. So let's go ahead and flash this to the device, run in RAM, and then check and see if we can notice and we can find this on the mobile app side. So here I have the mobile app running. There's nothing yet because I reset the device and I'm going to run in RAM. Once we run in RAM, we can see the device. And as you can see in NRF Connect, it has actually recognized this, recognizing this as a heart rate monitor. And that's because it includes the service UID that we took from the assigned numbers or the 16-bit UIDs, which matches the heart rate. So if we look here, it was the heart rate, which is 180D. So the NRF Connect scanner app is recognizing this as a heart rate monitor. And if you look at the raw data here, it'll tell you that it recognized that there is a 16-bit service UID with 180D. And then we have also service data with the data being 10. So if we go in and say we add more data. So instead of four bytes, let's say we want to add three more. So let's say it's seven. So let's do one zero, two zero, three zero, four zero. So that's adding three more bytes. Let's go ahead and reset the device, run in RAM, and let's go ahead and rescan. And as you can see here, now the data, the service data is updated and we have 10203040. So that's it for the custom data format option. And obviously this is the most flexible data format that you can use because it allows you to not just include the standard ones that are included in the Nano Beacon config tool, but also define your own custom format that you can implement on the scanner to recognize and interpret. So that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.